Hey, let's go boys, 25 Terra Metal Shards in the pocket. Yes, we'll gladly take another one of those. Starting to really hate this boss right now. Not a huge casket, really? Really? Ah, I just want to get one core before moving on to Fall of War, honestly, but can I please fucking get it, man? Damn. Why so many caskets? It hurts. Right, well, Chasm ain't really on my side today. I'm just gonna take a little break from him. Um go ahead and start off by doing my chaos elemental kills for the day real quick not sure how far i'm off but should be close enough okay that's done but i still need one more day and then we can clear that achievement as well i would re fucking hell what level do you need definitely need vip zone which is a 500 dollars rank i think legendary to spawn fadion callisto and fanonat is in there and then i probably need sponsor to spawn archaeologist and scorpio in there i'll probably have to at least do those two in the wildy i'll probably do everything in the wildy at some point just because progress it takes too long to get donator ranks nowadays bonds are neighbor testing out his scooter uh <laughs> fuck what was i saying i don't know never mind it it just came to my attention there's a big shaman mess going on i'm not too interested in doing lizard shaman but, or the king, I should say. Oh, fucking fuck, get rid of that. I want to use that here. But the reason I'm running over here real quick, I'm still on challenge mode, so it's not ideal. But, if we just get five kills real quick while it's packed AF, that means I'll uh, get the five cleared for the elite achievement in advanced, which is in my opinion. Just to clarify, there's this elite achievement where you have to kill every boss in the game five times on challenge mode. The reason this takes so long is because it includes things like sacred dungeon bosses, the superior God Wars dungeon ones, other superiors, like, it's a lot to do. So, uh, yeah, may as well get this done right now real quick. Just five kills, that's all. Are we at 302? Easy. Alright, did my lizard shaman king kills. Just to make sure we're gonna open the thing. Yeah, I did a lot more. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want to leave. See, this is what I was talking about. Every single NPC and boss in the game is there. Well, every boss in the game. Um, and Lizard Shaman King, I do believe it was added when it came out. I'm also like, ugh, stupidly blind, so... What the fuck? Oh, there it is. Lizard Shaman King. Yeah, 14 kills. I still have to do normal ones. And Bunch of regular NPCs that is not a big deal, but I'll do that later. There's no point trying to do it now because we can't complete it anyway. Alright, took a while, but we finally got ourselves a nice little terror team. We got Skeleton and Ghost joining as well, so uh, let's hope for some good loot this time around. Terror hasn't been all that kind to us. Oh, hold up. I'm in Discord call. I forgot to mute. My bad. <laughs> terror hasn't been that kind to me, as you guys know so far. 250? Yeah, 195 KC, of course, some nightmares. Yeah, this is what we're looking at. One unique on the log and one exo orb that's not on the log. Hopefully that changes in these next few hours. Alright, good luck first night terror kill of tonight. Any lootations? Absolutely not. Good luck kill number two. Terror orb for skeleton. Never mind. Good luck next one. All the loot today again, boys. Okay, this one is a drop, surely. Boom! Imbue stone. Oh! Well, I'll be damned. Here we go! Terror orb for someone. Come on. Oh shit! Blessing for skeleton! Oh, let's fucking go! Gretz, dude. I mean, that's not a terror orb, but a 20kc Inquisitor blessing is nothing to complain about. Goddamn. Juicy shit. Good luck next one, boys. Back to back for skeleton. Boom! A uh, ghost with an imbue stone. Okay, okay, okay. Something. Getting some loot now, that's nice. I just want to give a quick shout out to the group Ironman group Cock Destroyers for reaching a heroic prestige mode. What a lovely fucking group Ironman there. Never seen that before, but that is pretty epic. Alright, here comes the next one. This is a juicer as well. Bing bong bong. Send. Let's go real quick. Good luck. Please. Next, go! Something. Nothing. I reminded something. Imbue stone for me and skeleton with an imbue stone as well. It is something. Here we go for another one! 
Oh, skeleton with a imbue stone. Ghost and skeleton be eating today. Fuck, next one drops. Ooh, crest for conflict. All right, every well, the person hosting left and ghost wants a break and I want to smoke too, so just checking the trading post real quick. A few more things to claim. Lovely. We got two imbue stones from the session, I believe. Ooh, there's a lot of enchanted capes in there. Let's go buy two and hope we get it this time. You guys already know what's coming at this point, right? Champion capes, boom boom. Uh, infernal capes, uh, boom boom. And imbue stones, uh, boom boom. Oh, we still have one to spare. Or did I get three this session? I feel like I only got two. Maybe I still had one left over. I don't remember. Meteorite cape attempt number nine. Yes, OMFG, finally. Oh, nut, nut. Oh, I'm so glad to finally get that. Jesus Christ. What do we need for our Grand Max now? <laughs> Wait, I can do another attempt, right? Do I have everything? Can we just get two? Ah, oh, that would have been perfect. That would have given me the confidence to be like, you know, roll one for the Grand Max. Wait, actually, we don't need our current Infernal Cave now that we have a Meteorite. Let's do another one. Right, let's do one more. Just shits and giggles. It would be funny if we get our second Meteorite and then we enchant the Grand Max one out of one and just waste it. But that's not gonna happen anyway, so don't worry about it, guys. Ah, genuinely, I'm pretty happy to get that. Just for compare, I think I've compared it before, but slightly higher stats, bit more accuracy, bit more depth, one strength bonus for ranged strength. Why does it have ranged strength? We'll never know. But uh, just happy to get that out of the way because it is an upgrade for now. I don't want to have to get another Infernal Cape right this minute, and I don't think I have any crests. I do have crests. Oh, I think I got this a while ago and I was like, oh, I'll save that for uh, when we do other crap later. The Grand Max. That's smart. Smart boy. Oh, it's so tempting. Because if I get it one out of one, it's just over and done with. I should at least <laughs> have a backup cape. Or like some more enchant attempts before we do this though. And I also need at least an Infernal for the Infernal Max cape. More shit to work on, boys. Lovely. Alright then guys, back on EcomBrush, haven't played this account in a couple of days due to the update uh, with Gauntlet releasing and everything, uh, been having a lot of fun on the group barman doing that. The thing is though, it's a lot of fun left, <laughs> a lot a lot. So for variety's sake, I wanted to go ahead and do something on EcomBrush as well that is not Gauntlet, just so we can have a few videos on the side that, you know, isn't just only focused on one thing only. Um, with this recent update, we have actually had a little um, extra bonusy thing, which is the Narda Spotlight, Event Spotlight Narda. The, scotch has, uh, the Scorch has reached Narda. Defeat the monsters within Narda for event tokens and the chance to earn the limited time Mystic Sand Party Hat and Cloak. The Cloak is also a very interesting item, to say the least, because... Right here, it looks dope as fuck, first of all. Increases damage by 4% for each Mystic Sand or Narda piece currently equipped. Effects tripled in the Narda minigame. I'm gonna assume that makes, you know, the Narda ropes best in slot inside of the minigame. 2.5% magic damage per piece, so that's already 7.5. And then you get 4% for each Narda piece, so that is an additional 12% uh, damage, but then tripled inside the Narda minigame, already becoming 36. So that alone is already going to give a bunch. Maybe the cape itself counts as a Narda item because it is a sand item or, you know, mystic sand item as it says. So if it counts itself, that could also be really good. You have a party at just cosmetic. Mystic sand, I don't know how good that would be as like melee gear if you have the cape on, but yeah, you would have to get it first. This one is 666 and you only get it from the Scorch Mummy. Now yesterday I did one or two runs, I think, because I needed a thumbnail and stuff. So I did do a little bit of it, but I thought it might be interesting to do our 1000 Narda mummies with this recent update to see how much money we can make from it. So we are currently at 64 kills, so we're missing ever so slightly, because I did a few already, but uh, 936 kills then um, is still a pretty good amount to track. In terms of loot tracker though, I don't think it fully works, there's no minigame Narda one, so I might just have to do overall loot tracker. And then, oh, that works. <laughs> I'm not sure if it will count the sarcophagus if you open those. That is the only thing I'm not sure about. Anything that drops on the floor will most certainly be tracked properly. Just uh, 
when you open the sarcophagus. I don't know if that's gonna track. Uh, when you're doing Narda, it's always recommended to use a second account. You can't run it on two accounts at the same time, but you're just leaving the first account to be in the room because this will increase your spawns if you go inside with someone else. You're just gonna enter on it and then that account is just gonna stand still at the very start and you start running it with your own account. So yeah, that's the general gist of it. More spawns equals more loot, so definitely worth doing. The instance has two times monsters and two times bosses. Maybe I should bring my uh, galvanic butterfly net in my inventory because there is a chance to spawn a Narda Imp. When that does happen, would be nice if we had the uh, the chance to double it at least. So yeah, we're gonna go run some Narda minigame. Let's go ahead and see if there is any juicy loot from this. Well, I already know it is because every single monster is also gonna drop summer tokens and they are valuable. I mean, it's not huge profit per token, but it adds up quite quickly. Yeah, based on the overall loot tracker, it's definitely not tracking what I'm getting from sarcophagus. So it's only gonna track everything you get as like a visible drop, that is. Fair enough, I guess. Um, the only downside is when you use like gold tomb keys and stuff, if you get those from the sarcophagus, and it's not gonna track any items you get from that, but any obvious Narda items in the bank will be noticed, <laughs> you know? Like if I pull a Narda rope top or something from the wall or a wand or whatever, I'll make sure to keep track of that as well for the end loot. Because I haven't really ever covered much about Narda in the past, I guess it's a good idea if I do that, right? Explain to you guys what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I try my best to run through the entire thing as far as I can. I definitely want to try and get to the Scorch Mummy every time. So up until this point into the dungeon, I just kill everything. I'm using uh, magic, obviously, best I have with the Chaos Scepter, because you get increased magic accuracy and damage inside the Narda minigame with it. We also just got a little uh, silver key, so that is nice. Um, try to run through it, kill as much as possible, because at the end of the day, we are trying to get the achievement. If shit doesn't auto loot always, like a point mystery box and stuff, I don't generally run back for that. Uh, I do bring the Ancient God Sword and everything because it will allow me to one shot the like mummies at the end, the important ones or even sand mummies if you end up spawning those. Which uh, there are three sarcophagus inside the dungeon that can, can spawn a sand mummy, but it is a random chance. So just nice to kill those higher HP ones instantly and move on. Because at this point I have one and a half minute left, there's still a lot of dungeon left, so I just kind of skip the middle and this annoying long part, because otherwise you're not going to make it. You can bring keys inside, silver keys, bronze keys and gold keys when you get them from the loot, because it does extend your current dungeon run. You'll have a bit more time to finish it all together, which is nice, but uh, for now just going to try and get to the end, yeah, just trash mummies, keep running try and get to the two important ones which are right there the scorch and the cursed they have the good drop table loots oh yeah and this one can spawn a sand mummy low chance though it's just a shitty afflicted moving on all right there we go spec once on the scorch they're 255 hp so as long as i hit over a five they will die that instantly kills both of them just gonna wait and see what appears point mystery boxes uh, two keys i definitely don't need two of those Silly game. They will disappear in a bit at the end of the dungeon. And then you can go through the Mystic Sand Door. Just only gonna show you guys uh, the run once because I feel like I haven't really ever talked much about it or covered it or anything like that. Maybe bring a Terra Pet is also a good idea just for the last mummy. Already gonna be rough to make it there in time. I don't think I will. May as well open this. Try and get a key or something. Okay, well, now it's gonna teleport us out, and we do it all over again. Until we kill a thousand of those mummies. Like 12 kills that run, not the best, but happens. Hey, look boys, it's our first sand mummy in all the run so far. This is one of the sarcophagus that can spawn it. You know what, I may as well show all three of them in this run real quick. Just so you guys know for future reference. This one is uh, early on into the dungeon if you go all the way west. And that little side passage. This one has a reasonable drop table for like sand mummy pieces and stuff. Sadly not lucky on this one, but always try and spawn those every run you do. This one right here is number two. All the way, you know, past the little room. Gotta walk all the way around, go back up right before you get to the scorch and the cursed. This one can spawn a sand mummy as well. And all the way at the end of the dungeon is the final sand mummy chance on this one, I believe. But I always do the final three just in case, because I'm not 100% sure. Till I see one spawn again, but I like 99% sure it's the first one. So yeah, now you know. 
Oh hey, there's the third Sam. I mean, now we know for sure that it does in fact spawn in that first one. Hey, we just got the Pyramid Plunder number one, 250 mummies done. One fourth of the way. Nothing too interesting as of yet, like rare drop wise, but keep going and see if we get anything at all.